American novelist Agnes Sly Turnbull spoke for many dog owners when she wrote, dogs' lives are too short, their only fault, really. Cancer kills more senior dogs than anything else. Ahead of Pet Cancer Awareness Month in November, we're exploring the largest clinical trial to date on a vaccine against canine cancer. It's happening at the University of Wisconsin. And as Michelle Fiore discovered in our Sunday morning spotlight, it's showing positive results. These are difficult days for dogs and emotional ones for their owners. Our pets develop cancer at a high rate and we outlive our pets. So if you have enough pets over time, you're going to have one that unfortunately develops cancer. The competent staff at UW Veterinary Care in Madison treats some 4,800 cases a year of newly diagnosed cancer. And in here... Oncologist uh, Dr. David Vale gave us a tour. Based on a patient CT scan that shows where the tumor is, she is going to tell the radiation machine where to treat and what normal tissues to avoid. This is where dogs like Pippi go for treatment after a cancer diagnosis. Which is an advanced, world-class radiation therapy unit. Scientists can only hope all of this will someday be unnecessary. A new canine cancer vaccine aims to target cancer cells before they even show up. So that your immune system uh, will recognize it when it tries to infect you and kill it. It's the first prophylactic anti-cancer vaccine in the history of veterinarian medicine. Oh, it's very exciting. I mean, it's the reason I've, I got into being a specialized veterinarian in cancer research in the first place. Three locations are taking part in the VAX trial, which stands for Vaccination Against Canine Cancer Study. Colorado State University, the University of California at Davis, and here at UW-Madison. Most of the anti-cancer vaccines that are currently um, under investigation involve um, taking the patient's tumor after they've developed a tumor and looking at it for abnormal proteins and then creating a vaccine. That's very expensive and very individual, so you have to make it for that patient. This vaccine, if it were to work, is shovel ready or you take it off the shelf. Doesn't matter about what tumor type that patient has or the individual. The vaccine is already ready to go, and so you just vac vaccinate the patient. The five-year study, now in its fifth year, got underway in 2019. We advertised this trial. Within days, we had hundreds of people that wanted to enter their companions in this clinical trial. 950 dogs were screened, 800 qualified because they had no prior cancer. Come on, Pavy. Pavlov's one of the 800. He's just a joy to have around. The chance to extend the life of this sweet-natured eight-year-old golden retriever was enough for his family to jump into the study, feet or paws first. If somebody is down or if somebody is, you know, is having kind of a bad time, he will uh, like be drawn to them and like, you know, and he'll literally give you this look like, hey, how are you doing today? Bruce and Colleen Witzenberg had some reservations, but say it's been rather easy. Part of the reason we signed up for it is because we thought, you know, this is part of being in science is being willing to be a volunteer for some of these things. The study involved a series of shots. It, it involves initially three vaccinations that are spread out every two weeks. So they get a vaccine, two weeks later the second, two weeks later the third vaccine, and then they get um, uh, boosters. They come in every six months uh, for the duration of the five years. Patients either got the cancer vaccine or a placebo. They don't know which, neither does Dr. Oh, yeah. Vale. I can't tell you which one received the true vaccine versus the placebo vaccine. Uh, they look the same, and that's to blind me so that I subconsciously don't do something that would bias the study result. A safety advisory board's been analyzing the data to determine any side effects, which Dr. Vale says have been minimal to date. A fever for perhaps a few hours, uh, maybe a flu-like symptom, kind of tiredness, uh, uh, some pain at the local site of vaccination. Those are the typical vaccine type side effects. We see that but we haven't seen any anything beyond that. <laughs> Pavlov's felt it. <laughs> he was a little tired maybe afterwards, but nothing else. Noticeably a little slower on his usual routine, walking alongside his brother Blaylock on the disc golf course. It was always my job to take them on the walk. It's kind of because of these guys that I got into disc golf. So it's unclear if Pavlov is in the vaccine or the placebo group, but either way, his family's hoping he'll be playing disc golf for years to come. 
on the positive side, if he doesn't get cancer because of this, that's just amazing, right? And Dr. Vale says if the study's a success, it could have deeper implications, possibly even be used for studies on cancer in humans. The hope is certainly that if we develop something uh, that works in dogs to prevent uh, cancer or decrease the incidence of cancer, that will translate into people. Whatever the VAX trial ultimately shows, the Witzenbergs smile as they think about how their Pavlov's making a difference. <laughs> We're really, really excited and proud to be a part of it, um, and especially given Pavlov's namesake, right? <laughs> you know, we, we're clearly scientists, so, so we thought, hey, this will be great.